Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 2 episode number 30 and 14. And these two are the final episodes of this season. Okay, the previous two episodes. Um, the first thing that happens is um, Korra has come back and uh, there was that whole thing with Varric that got completely exposed. Uh, Varric called in the president and you know like the president was attacked. Thankfully, Bolin was there. Bolin saved everyone. But Varric's schemes are out now. The person uh, who attacked the president actually said everything. And that, yeah, Varric has hired us and Varric got um, in his, uh, like, you know, himself in prison. But he's having a good time in prison. Julie is with him and he's like, you know what? Um, I did most of these things and you can't lie that I also helped you guys a lot. You know bowling with the mover you know like i convinced cora to you know okay, go against unalock this and that uh marco's uh go marco going to the prison that was my fault i forgot uh, forgive me <laughs> but yeah and then he gives um you know like cora's team the battleship julie <laughs> and he's like yeah use that to go against unalock and cora uh, cora's dad gets captured by unalock and then we go into like you know Unalock's place. We fight. We get captured. Uh, good thing that uh, <coughs> Boomy he he fell down from <laughs> the Sky Bison and he used his newfound spirit friends to somehow get in and like release all the people that were like you know uh, restrained over there. And like you know she saved everyone and uh yeah and then we go into the spirit world um we fight Korra tries to close the portal unfortunately it's too late the harmonic convergence has started Patu is out and yeah now we have to fight otherwise um Unalok is going to fuse with Fatu and uh yeah things won't be uh good after that so yeah anyways let's see let's see what these two episodes brings i'm getting i'm sure we're going to get a huge fight the final boss battle and <laughs> yeah let's see so this is episode number 13 and 14 of uh the legend of korra book 2 so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, they are also here to rescue Genora. Oh yeah, the dark after, whatever that means. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, here he is. <laughs> Look at him. Okay. Okay. Marco, uh, Bolin, what are they doing? Oh! Yes! Just, yep, yep! Good! Okay, that's... <laughs> I did not expect that. He just threw him out. yeah not in the spirit world i think yeah <laughs> exactly okay what 
Really? Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. Huh. We need some help. Mm. Who the what's starfish? What is that? Oh no, wait, who the who's that? Oh my god, it's a spider! Yo, Denzin, move! What? What? What is that thing? In I guess it's to attract prey, you know, like that star thing. Like preys get attracted to that, and that's when the. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Vato's like, God damn it. Ugh. Okay. All right, he's she's kind of pushing. Oh, oh never mind. Oh, great. Uh, I feel like Unala can just step up. Okay, there. Come on! Yo! Okay. What the hell? Nice! Yeah, we need to stall. Okay. What the like is that a mushroom? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay. A very polite mushroom. Oh, it's um, Iro. Yay! Who the hell is that dog? Oh, the spirit dog. Oh, that's a fox. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can help us? Uh. Whoa, it's just gone. Oh no, is he thinking that? Oh no. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Oh. Wow. Okay. Add a little fire. Oh, this Rava. Oh my god, I feel like Unulak's going to pop out from somewhere. I thought that was the Unulak coming. <laughs> I don't, I feel like... Oh no. 
Oh no. Run! Okay. There he is. God damn. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, are we going to get cooked or something? Whoa. Okay. Oh my god, Unala is going to jump scare Cora now. What the hell? Yep, there you go, jump scare. Oh. Oh no, Poland. Pretend to be, pretend to be unconscious. God catch them off guard. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Yep, they're fusing. Oh, well, yeah, like, obviously this was going to happen, like. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Yep. That's Ugh. well obviously this was going to happen. Yeah, great. Okay, what now? If... <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, that sound. Oh, no. Wait, that's Zhao. He's here? Oh, he, yeah, we didn't know what happened to him. You know, in, in, Air, uh, no, that stands in. All right. So oh, he he was sent here. My God. Hey. Yeah, it was good that they tied each other. Like you know, like they won't get it lost. Wow, oh my god. Damn! Well, I feel like Korag is handling herself pretty well. 
Even though he is fused with Vatu, I thought he would just you know, dominate the whole thing. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh. Oh no. Come on, after our stage. Um Oh there you go. Rava. Okay. Um, damn the the fight. <laughs> oh no, is he like oh no. Yeah, it's affecting him. Cannibals, that's his fear? Or maybe in one of his journeys or something. What? What? These are all there. Oh no! Yo! Maybe this is Tenzin's vision, you know? That they actually left him? Oh my god. Oh my god. Well. <laughs> uh, yeah, perhaps. What? Uh, what, you need to pee or something? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh no, okay! Oh my god. Oh yeah! <laughs> Bolin. Oh! Bolin? Varric is rubbing off on you. <laughs> he has a w way with his words, you know. <laughs> oh! Oh, damn. Oh, okay. Um... Eternal dawn. Doesn't it like what the hell, sister? Yeah, he he was really <laughs> bowling. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Damn! Okay. Oh! Wow. Okay, this is really cool. The fight scene is impressive. Oh, it's kind of like Katara, you know, like the way Katara did. Her water bending.
Oh. Oh, wait, 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 what? Oh no. Oh no, 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 Rava. Oh no, he's sealing Rava now. Oh my god. I guess that's what he did. Like seal Rava or something. Oh my god, I feel like his fear will be something related to Avatar. You know, like how his father is disappointed on him or something. Yeah, there you go. Ah. Yep, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, you failed me, son. He's going to say something like that. Oh, he himself said it. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Oh, I guess he understood it himself that yeah, I shouldn't. Yeah. All right, there you go. Oh my God, look at so many people just wandering here. <clears throat> oh, Jinora. Boomy. And the fog comes back again. Yeah, that damn owl. Okay, here we go again. Oh no, he's... Oh, okay, okay. Ah. Uh, we need some reinforcements. Okay. Oh. Wait, what happened? Oh, he's forget she's forgetting everyone little by little because um Rava's getting oh no. The connection is My god, look so many avatars. Oh, one. Uh. Oh, what's she going to do? Oh, yeah, she she's. Oh. 
Ok, yep. Ah, there you go, your beloved dad. What the? Um. Okay. Oh wow. Well. What now? Um Yeah, so it's pretty concerning. All right. So this episode um it's kind of got worse. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got worse from pre the previous time and I feel like yeah but at least we got Jinora back that's some positive thing that came out of this episode and um, yeah that's it okay this episode um, first of all we you know we are fighting in the spirit world at first Korra just <laughs> throws out <laughs> That was kind of funny, you know, Shikura just grabs Unalak and just throws him out. He's like, nope, you're not staying here. <laughs> and he, she... Now, I feel like um, Bolin and Marco did their best to actually stop him, but they were too... Le like, you know, like, what can I say? Like, there were two of them only. And I feel like Eska and Desna, along with Unalak, they were heavily outnumbered them. And at the same time, they they just caught them by surprise. So... If there were like three or four more people guarding the portal, I'm I'm thinking maybe Unalak wouldn't be able to get in. But this there's two two less of them, and ah uh, oh yeah, like that's that's basically it. So yeah, I feel like ah uh, I don't know like ah like I'm I'm thinking like maybe they need a few more people, you know. Like especially in in dude because of situations like this, like Korra is involved with Vatu here fighting him, while uh, Marco and Bolin was just there to guard the portal, and they didn't even know from where Unalak can come in. So yeah, it was like a jump scare. They can come from anywhere, else, like anywhere they want to, and they have to keep their eye open and you know just be aware of their surroundings and. And yeah, like for two people to, uh, it's kind of impossible, I feel like. So, ah, uh, yeah, like if, if the whole thing with Jinora didn't happen and if Tenzin was here at this moment, I feel like they would have been easily able to protect the portal. But unfortunately, yeah, that was not the case. Even even if Tonrak was there with them, you know, it could have helped. But uh, yeah, Tonrak is also out of commission. So this was purely bad luck because the whole circumstances was not in their favor um okay so molin and marco are keeping an eye on the spirit portal while on the other side we see tenzin um Bo uh, tenzin bumi and kaya them wandering in the spirit world to find Jinora. now it was interesting to see the the, the different spirits like there was like this one spider spirit i think has a little starfish on the head and i feel like i've heard like you know like, like i've heard that actual animals you know kind of do this they have like a little um thing like a little like a bait thing which they use to bait the animals the prey to come closer just like the starfish here and when they come closer they just completely grab him and devour them Something like that. So this spider kind of reminded me of that. He had a little spark, like in a sparkling <laughs> star on his head. And everyone gets curious. Everyone's like, what the hell is that? Like a small little star. And then they go, go closer to it. And it, we see like, it's like a huge ass spider. And yeah. <laughs> okay. And yeah, they're trying to find everything. Kaya ties, tries to find them in her own way. Fails Bumi as well. But... 
yeah they can't find anyone and they are like yeah we need some help from here otherwise we won't be able to do anything now we see bolin and marco fighting and <clears throat> um I'll, I'll i'll be honest here this one thing that uh, this episode did really well is the fighting scenes it was nicely choreographed it was nicely choreographed the like the the, the way they were like you know fighting just like you know, jumping from one place to another kind of you know like in this cool way it 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 was really it was really nice all right and they like Tenzin's group they are trying to find Jinora failing moving in the same place i completely lost it at the mushroom when the mushroom started to speak <laughs> <laughs> like, I think Ten Ten was, Tenzin was like, wait, we came here like the past three times. <laughs> it's like, how do you know it's the same mushroom? And the mushroom is like, yep, it's the same mushroom. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, that caught me off guard. And we met Iroh here. And Iroh with his little spirit fox. So Iro kind of warns them. He's like, "This place is not for you guys." But yeah, since this is related to Jinora, ah, you should be careful. You can stay here, but be careful. Now, for a moment, when uh, Korra was capturing um, Vatu uh, and was almost going to seal him, for a moment I thought maybe she would be able to seal. But then I was like, "Yeah, it's, I don't think that's possible because." Like, if, if he, she's actually able to seal him, like, then the whole thing with Unalak is pointless. You <laughs> know, the whole thing that the episode, like, you know, this season built up, it kind of becomes pointless. So I realized, like, yeah, it, it wouldn't be that easy. And that's what happens. Unalak comes in with his uh, <clears throat> children, Eska and Desna, and catches both Marco and Bolin by surprise. And just jump scare Skora from behind. He's like, haha, got you. And like a little bit more, you know, we would have gotten Vatu, but nope, we can't do anything. And oh my god, uh, Marco and Bolin are caught by the ice. <laughs> and then we see um, Vatu fusing with, um, what's his name? Unalak. Now Tenzin comes up with a plan. He's like, okay, we need to go to the place where everyone goes when there's loss. So how do we do that? We get captured by the enemy. So they just go to the spider, gets captured, and gets thrown into the valley of I think fog of lost souls. Yeah. The spirit prison for humans. And um the fog is actually a spirit. It infects your mind and slowly drives you mad imprisoning you in your darkest memories interesting i was like okay so we're going to get to see what the actual like you know what tenzin kaya and bumi feels about themselves and we kind of got a little bit some pieces of hints i already knew about tenzin tenzin's insecurity is about her his dad being um you know disappointed in him and that came out later on okay the things that surprised me in this is zao zao Oh my god zhao is here zhao okay zhao not zhao zhao is here and so that's what happened you know in season one uh when we defeat him and he like just gets lost somewhere this is where he ended up in and he's been wandering here and he's always like yeah i need to find the avatar i'll catch him mistake stands in for ang okay um and then we shift back again to Korra. Korra fighting Unalak. Korra gets into trouble when he she's just like. You know, at first, I was like, okay, Korra's kind of holding herself pretty well against Unalak, even though Unalak has fused with Rava. But then she just gets thrown down into this like you know valley kind of thing, and kind of gets a little vision of Rava, and comes up, and we have a. And it's like such a well choreographed fight after that. Now, in the valley, in the fog of, uh, I forgot the name. Anyways, Lost Souls. Yeah. Um, as we, as I said, we were, we got a few information about what actually is like the deepest, darkest fear of the different characters. 
Bhumi talks about cannibals and I'm guessing he, this is probably like some kind of trauma he had in one of his journeys like he's a person who goes on different journeys you know he, he himself said like I have like stories from my journeys and I'm guessing maybe he ran into these cannibals in some of one probably one of his journeys and that's like probably his one of the biggest trauma which still eats at him and that's why he's like oh these cannibals they're here they're closing in run and that's like his deepest trauma um and Kaya, interesting. Kaya was like, wait a minute, she said something about people restraining her? Okay, um. Kaya just screams. She's like, who are you two? Um. Okay, no, you're just a vision. I have no family. You can't tie me down. So I'm guessing Kaya's fear is like um, her not being able to do anything. People tying her down, you know, like like metaphorically tying her down. Like obviously not like you know actual tying her down. Like tying her down, like keeping her in her place, like not letting her do anything. Is that like her fear? Maybe, maybe. I don't know why, but probably that's some kind of like a trauma or fear she has. So she's like, yeah, like just runs away. And she, she's probably like, she has this. I, I do remember her kind of saying something in one of the previous episode about how uh, something about his, her family, like, you know, about Aang and something like that, where he, she kind of told about her grievances. Yeah, it was something like that. I guess her like whole thing about the family is kind of like she doesn't have like a good relationship or something. I don't know. Anyways, but this is like her trauma, I'm guessing. Not trauma, but like a fear that she has. Uh, anyways, and obviously I knew Tenzin what was going to happen to Tenzin. She he was going to see Aang because that's his fear. We know that. You know, he always thinks about what would have what would have happened if he's unable to succeed his dad and live up to his expectations, this and that. Okay, we go back to Eska and Desna. Oh my god. Bolin starts crying and at for, for a moment I, I was like, oh, Bolin, Varric, Varric is, has really trained you. <laughs> He's rubbing off on you, like, you know, like, just tricking the other person like this. And Eska, obviously, at first, like, you know, when, when they say like, oh, like, don't you think like your dad doesn't even care about you? So don't you think like we should stop him and uh, stop him from destroying the world? Uh, Desna was like, uh, yeah, maybe you're right, you know, like he did not care at all when I was dying. So <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. But Eska was not happy with that. Eska was like, no. So Bolin starts crying. Bolin's like, oh, I just realized how much I liked. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to see each other again if the world gets destroyed. And he just starts spouting this like this weird sentences which doesn't make any sense he's like i'm sorry that we'll never have a chance to rekindle the dying ember that was our love into a big fire of love finish <laughs> oh boy ah works every time you know <laughs> and eska's like oh like wow what a poetic <laughs> explanation and she's like, you know, the, the ice melts. I feel like that was like a metaphorical thing where, you know, like she was angry up until this time. Like she was like this ice, you know, frozen ice. But now after hearing um, Bolin's passionate poem or whatever he did, her, <laughs> her anger melted and just like, no, the whole ice completely melted. And, <laughs> and she's like, yeah, go ahead. And after like if if you're able to stop that maybe after that we can spend our eternal darkness together or something like that she said <laughs> marco's like wow way to go bolin that was the best acting i've ever seen <laughs> you completely fooled her <laughs> bolin is like yeah right that was acting uh, she has a little tear you know like just ah uh. oh my god uh, I feel like Bolin was half, like, <laughs> half acting and half it was like a real emotion. Uh, like, you know, the, the crying, at least the crying part, that was real. 
He was like, yep, we're going to die now. No one can save us. <coughs> oh my god. <sighs> Alright, and then we go back again to the fighting. Vatu and Korra fighting. And oh my god, like Vatu comes out of um, Unala's face and grabs uh, Rava, takes her out and seals her, is like in the process of sealing her. Okay, and then we go back again to the Valley of Lost, the Fogs or whatever. And Tenzin meets Aang here. And interesting to see, like, Aang actually kind of tells him that, yeah, you're wrong. You're not supposed to be me. You're you. So don't try to copy me or, like, you know, don't, like, you know, like, you know, try to be you. And he actually comes to, like, uh... I feel like like he kind of breaks out of that whole thing of oh I won't be able to uh like you know like what what do you, I won't be able to make my dad happy you know I'll make him disappointed this whole thing and trying to always copy Ang this thing I feel like he came to like a has like you know in his heart it they came to an a stop and like an understanding and he's like yeah I am me and I need to find Jinora now. So I cannot stop here. And for a moment, you know, his, I guess his determination kind of paved the fog away. And he grabs Jinora, Kaya, Bumi, and just gets out of that place. And in the end, after that, we kind of see, like, you know, Jinora saying, like, yep, the word is. Oh, no. Uh, then uh, after that, we see what happened. Uh, Rava, now, uh, Vatu tries to. Yeah, seal Rava and they kind of get a little bit, you know, um, interrupted when Bolin and Marco comes in, but still they can't do anything. And again, they now this time they start just, you know, attacking Rava and little by little the connection kind of fades away and all the previous avatar kind of fades away from Korra's memory one by one and... Uh, yeah, Vatu, uh, you know, Rava kind of just goes away, disappears. Now, I do remember, like Rava said before, like, we cannot die. So, this means that he, she has not died. She's probably just dispersed or something and probably come back if somehow we're able to stop Vatu. So, these, like, you know, these spirits cannot die. This light spirit and this dark spirit, they cannot die and they will never die. They'll just get suppressed. And that's probably what happened. So we need to somehow defeat Vatu. I don't know how, but somehow. And if we do that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure like Rava is going to come back. But we'll see. And Jinora's like, yeah, I need to go help Korra. And all, everything was going to get destroyed. And I don't know what Jinora's going to do after this. But Jinora just goes away. And leaves a light spirit to take Tenzin and his group out of the spirit world. And we see Tenzin transforming, uh, not Tenzin, sorry, Munalok transforming into a Titan. And uh, yeah, he has fused with Vatu and he's like, haha, how 10,000 years of darkness will start. And uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> we'll see. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, anyways, okay, that was episode number 13, yeah, so let's start with the final episode of this book, uh, this is episode number 14 of The Legend of Korra, book 2, and this is the final episode of this season, so let's see how this whole thing ends, so yeah, I'll put in the subtitles and the timer here, thank you to whichever is a preference, and let's get started. Okay, so here's the countdown, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, the final episode. Oh boy. <clears throat> hmm. Like, I never thought Jinora would play such a big role, you know? 
kind of surprising. I didn't think about that. Light in the dark, okay. <laughs> They're like, oh, so pretty. Like now they're moving. Wow. Like I'm baffled. There you go. Your city. Like, like what, what else can I say? Like you, you're just waiting for this. Raiko did not move his armies and now just, you know, just, just. Like when Korra came asking for his help, he did nothing. It's like, oh, my people, I don't want to get into this. And now look at this. My God, like, I'm kind of pissed at Raiko, you know, a little bit. Like, I understand the whole political, like, you know, things. Oh, great. Wow. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. Oh, wow. So mature. Toppling a statue. Oh god. Oh boy. Ah, oh, there she is. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like, what can we do now? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> nope, she has even forgotten, I think. Yeah. Uh. Whoa. Uh. Oh. Yeah, you're happy now? Oh my god, what the? Damn. Hmm. Oh, damn. Oh, just waiting there. Wow. What? Oh, is that? <laughs> Varric! What? Varric! Yo! <laughs> Julie just got yeeted out of there! What? Okay! <laughs> Do the thing! Varric was waiting for this, you know? This is like his prison break. Uh. That's true, you know, yeah, he... Oh. Oh! Interesting. 
Okay, like he learned that from. No, with with you yourself, your spirit. Wow, he really kind of grew, you know, after that whole fog of. Oh really? Oh yeah, the tree of time. Hmm. Okay. And yeah, we have a perfect place. There you go. Oh. Mm. True. You know? Yeah, he, he was. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? Um, meditate. Yeah. Well, you have to, otherwise the world will be destroyed. <laughs> ah, nothing you can do about it. Ah. Uh. There you go. Like Sarava is there somewhere. The light in the dark. Okay. Oh, this is that place where Ang went. Yeah, okay. You know, like the whole Guru Pathik episode. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, it's getting big, bigger. What? <laughs> what? This is beginning <laughs> an attack on Titan. Like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh boy. And there she is. Oh! Oh! Just, just gets. <laughs> Blue Giant. Hello there. Damn. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> wow, she's just Rava like 
This is embarrassing, Rava. Not Rava, sorry, Vatu. This is embarrassing, Vatu. Like, what? You were just talking so big and now... Look at you, just groveling on the ground. Oh, it's... Um... Okay. Come on, f for a moment, just... Just, you know, like... Get your mind out of Rafa, like, as, as Tenzin said. And... Okay, yeah. Come on. What the... Is, is he like... Okay. My God. <laughs> oh, Bolin. Um, wait, where's Eska and Desna? There you go. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay. Wait, what the? Oh, that's Genora. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yo, Rohan is like, what the <laughs> Do you see Rohan's face? He's like, what the hell? <laughs> Oh no. Okay, so what is what is that? Oh, what well, is that? Oh, Rava, that's Rava. All right, just g gouge it out. Yeah, there you go. Ah, there you go. And now eat it. <laughs> I think that's what... Okay. Oh! Wait, he's, she's purifying! Or whatever... Yeah. Damn! Beaten by his own spell! This is the thing that he taught... Uh, remember Unalak taught... Uh, taught Korra? Beaten by that. Poetic justice. Yeah. Wait, one thing I didn't understand. What? How did Genora... How was Genora able to... Like, will they explain that? Oh my god, too many of them. Ugh. Oh my god, look at this. Yes! And there she is.
I don't understand. How was Jinora able to do this? Like, what is that glowing? Like, I understand that's like her spirit, but. Okay. And there she is. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> oh. In you go. He's gonna get in inside Korra, yeah, I think. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, first we need to, like, you know, block the spirit portal, I'm guessing. Yeah. Ah, oh, there you go. Yep. And I'm sure she now remembers all the past connections again. Oh, thank God. Wait, what happened to Unalok? Did he like, I'm guessing he completely got obliterated or something. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Uh. Oh yeah, unlock. Um, shouldn't you? Wow, the change in. Oh no. Oh, okay. I was thinking. No, I don't. I think. Like, they have their. Yeah, like, his dad died, so. Oh. <laughs> oh, this thing. Boomju, yeah, forgot his name. Hmm. Yeah, I'm guessing. Wait. Wait, what? Oh, really? So she won't be able to talk with Aang anymore? Well, like... Okay, I was not expecting that. Hmm. Um, I don't... Ah, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, let, like, let's just keep it open for the time being. And, uh, yeah. Oh, damn. So, basically, Unalak died and... And, like, okay. Um... Uh, oh, is he going to say? Oh... Is going to talk about Asami? Oh, 
Oh, he, oh, she remembers. Remembers now? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Don't you talk about Asami? What? Oh. Oh, okay, I was not expecting that. Oh, whoa, whoa. I thought they were going to like patch up again or something. Um. Oh. Okay. Okay, bowling. Hmm. There you go. Yeah. True. Yeah, I feel like um this is a correct decision, you know. Yeah. Ah, there you go, the spirits. <laughs> Boom, Jew. I think that's the end. All right, I feel like that was like a correct way to end this. Um, because you know what, I kind of had the feeling as well that this whole uh, keeping the spirit portal closed and like you know like just separating them is a little bit um, you know, unnecessary because like when like we can see how spirits and humans can live together peacefully so not even giving them the choice like like what what we're doing by closing the spirit portal is like we're not even giving neither the humans nor the spirits the choice like here's the thing um if some spirit wants to be in the human realm they're free to do that now they can just come here maybe stay a few days for a vacation and just go back again and um if some spirits are like you know what i don't like the human realm i'll be here in my spirit realm i'll be happy here they can do that they have the freedom now like up until now the spirit portal was closed and they didn't have that freedom like people were always stuck in their respective worlds so even if there was someone who thought about going to the other world that that person or that spirit wouldn't be able to do that but now we have the freedom and uh, yeah if you want to be here be here if you don't want to be here don't be here that's completely your choice and uh, yeah now obviously there will be bad spirits like we know about this like there will definitely be bad spirits who somehow come to the human world or there might be bad humans who go to the spirit world to mess things up and there will definitely be conflict as well in the future because whenever we try to live together like we all know this you know like there will be conflict now and then but Cora will be here alongside Rava to guide them so up until now she, like you know the avatar was a bridge and maybe from here onwards the avatar will be the light that guides them and uh, you know like everything will be peaceful hopefully so I feel like this was the correct decision taken by Korra and as she said like we should look at our ancestors definitely but at the same time we must also think for ourselves 
pave our own path not only rely on our ancestors and see what they did so we should copy it no we should stop and think for ourselves as well and make decisions for ourselves so Cora made this change and I feel like this change was for the better because yeah like 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 it's 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 like the freedom like the, the freedom that was given to the spirits and the humans that was necessary now um like obviously i know unalok's intention was bad you know his core intention was bad he did want to open the spirit portal and did want to control like you know the human world and you know become like the dark avatar of blah 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 like you know fuse with vatu this that all that stuff he wanted to do and uh, but uh we do know that his core goal was to open the spirit portal and he himself said that oh avatar one had has done wrong and the thing that he said after that was completely unnecessary that i know he said something about you know after after one actually uh like you know kind of leading the world toward chaos this and that all that stuff was nonsense but the thing that he said before that that he he did it wrong by closing the portal um i wouldn't say it was wrong but at that time she thought he thought it was necessary to close the portal and that was his decision so and that was like you know being um followed after in the future generations as well so in a way he was correct at least at for that point where he said that it's wrong to actually close the portals you should keep it open but it's kind of um <laughs> I feel like it's kind of cruel, like not cruel, but uh, unusual to think about that his main goal was to open the spirit portal and uh, like you know let the spirits come in. So after he, basically after he dies, <laughs> Korra is like, you know what? Yeah, maybe we should keep the portal open. So it, yeah, it's it's kind of weird that the thing that he wanted. When he was alive, it never happened, and now that he is no longer in this world anymore, <laughs> this, it's it's happening now. Like, oh my god. Uh, but anyway, like obviously, I, I have no remorse for Unalak. He was a trash character as a person. He was like a very bad type of a human being, a very damn bad father. This and that. And I'm glad that he didn't even get any parting words. Like, you know, usually when a, a villain dies or whatever happens, they usually like, you know, kind of leave some parting words. Like, oh, like, mm. <laughs> in my next life, I'll get you or something like that. <laughs> he, he didn't even get that chance. He just fused into uh, Vatu and he was like, oh, I'll be the dark avatar. I'll, I'll rule over this world. And then Korra just purifies him and he just dies without even anything. Just like that. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that happened because Unlock was one of the worst characters in this show. As an antagonist, he was boring as hell. I, I did not like him at all. So like all the negative points he has. And I'm glad that he's gone. And I'm glad that he hopefully he never comes back. Like... In season one, Tarlok was Tarlok and Amon were at least they had like an interesting backstory and interesting what you know like they, they were kind of intelligent. They had like a little twist in their whole plot. It was it was entertaining. They were bad characters. They were villains. They were bad ass people as well. But nonetheless, they were entertaining at least in in the point in that point of view. While this guy here, he's a bad character. And he's boring his 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 backstory like and you can see you know like Unalak's backstory was one of the most basic things that I've ever ever seen. It's like it's 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 like it's it's very weird you know like usually like an, an antagonist like has like this type of a reason for you know doing the bad stuff he did. What reason did he have? He screwed over Town Rock when he was a child at first. That's what he did. And then he, like, he was up to no good again. And then he was like, you know what? I'll be the ruler of the world by fusing with Vati. And he does that. No, no interesting backstory, nothing. This guy was a total, what can I say? Like, uninteresting, boring character, Unalak. 
and I'm glad that he's gone, and I, I really hope that we never get to see him again. Like, one of the worst characters in this show, I have to say, like, Unalok. God damn. Oof. But, yeah. Okay, <laughs> enough about Unalok. This episode, oh, the final battle. The battle of the titans. <laughs> uh, Rava, uh, not Rava, sorry, Vatu. Vatu becomes this huge titan. And he just starts destroying the whole city. Now, again, like, I, I really don't understand what the hell was Raikou trying to do here. Like, I, uh, one thing I do understand that he probably did not want to move his army because of the political, you know, repercussions that might, he might have to face in the future. And he wanted to stay out of this. So he, he completely looked at this through political and you know like to the, that type of like a uh, vision and he was like nah i'm not going to get involved in this cora you know like so yeah i'm sorry and then like like <laughs> you know what this reminds me of that pikachu meme you know like <laughs> raikou does not lend his you know like army to cora um even though cora warned him that yeah the world might get destroyed if you help us it might not it might help us out and uh, Raikou doesn't do that <laughs> the next panel um <laughs> Vatu comes and starts destroying his uh, city surprise Pikachu face Raikou Raikou's like surprise Pikachu face Raikou's like what this wasn't supposed to happen like this reminds me of that meme, com meme completely and <laughs> I feel like this this is appropriate for this like, that's basically what happened here. He did not lend his army to Korra. And he decided to stay out of it. Korra warned him multiple times that, yeah, like, you're trying to save your city, but the world might get destroyed. So what city are you will be protecting then? Uh, Raikou was like, nope, I'm staying out of this. And then a few days later, Vatu comes in a titan form, destroys the Aang statue and starts... Like, you know, like, just shooting out up the, like, you know, the whole city, just huge, um, I don't know, energy beams he starts shooting at the city. And, like, even destroys Raikou's little airship. And Raikou is surprised Pikachu face. Raikou's like, what? This, this, this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, uh, what? What the hell? Now... <laughs> Now, here's another thing I feel like this this show kind of like this season kind of did I feel like they really like you know did a lot of things just so that Vatu could not be stopped before his like you know main transformation like if actually Raikou actually like I feel like Raikou become just like a sacrifice of the plot device or whatever you call it like he basically did not lend his army because if he actually lend his army to Korra you know we would have easily been able to stop Unalok from doing anything you know like Unalog would just have been ar arrested and just thrown into prison and you'd be like yeah like huh, like let's see if you can go to Vatu now you know and that would have happened so that's why the plot of the you know like of so season two just made Raikou like this so that Raikou was like nope I'm not going to lend you anything do whatever you can and yeah that's why no army was lent that's why they were heavily like you know lacking people for us team and that's why they weren't able to stop Unalok from fusing if the army helped I doubt any of this would have happened so I'm guessing that was like uh like basically because of that just because of plot they kind of did this and ah that's kind of you know yeah it's kind of ah weak storytelling I have to say if you think of it like that mm, because that's basically it like they had a chance to get out of this whole situation but they just you know made Raikou this type of a person who would not lend his army just so that they could drag this whole thing up until the end and so that Vatu and Rava uh not Vatu uh, yeah Vatu and Unalak can fuse just so that could happen they made Raikou not give the army and uh yeah I feel like that's that's basically what happened so, yeah. anyways, um, so yeah, that's like, you know, Raikou, uh, not Raikou, sorry, uh, Rava comes in, starts destroying the city, Korra, Bolin, and, um, Mako, they are, like, you know, all just injured and everything, Kaya takes them out, heals them, 
And one thing I was surprised here, um, no, not surprised, sorry, that's what happened later on. But here, um, Cora is like, yeah, I wasn't able to do anything. <clears throat> and Tenzin, interesting here, Tenzin actually really was able to, like, mature, you can say, like, he's already a mature person, but still, you know, he was mature even more, he was able to. And as a person, he grew. Like that whole thing with in the spirit world, he was like, yeah, we should not keep looking at our past and we should look at our spirit, our you know inner spirit as well. So he was like, Cora, like just forget about Rava for a second. Think of about this from your own and try to look into your own spirit, not Rava. Like before Avatar 1 um, fused with Rava, he was a single person so you should be able to do it as well so he goes to the tree of time um and meditates for a few moments like that was kind of weird you know like he just meditated them there for like five minutes or something and he was able to just unlock that thing that huge spirit you know uh, I guess that was something like probably because it was within the tree of time, you know, like like because he she was meditating within the tree of time, probably because of that, it did not take much time. Like she just sat there, kind of meditated a little bit, and the blue giant spirit or whatever you can say that she was able to unlock that. And we even see her going into that that state, you know, where there's like this huge uh, spirit of herself just standing there, you know, in, in uh, Avatar The Last Airbender as well. Aang was able to get in there with the help of Guru Pathik and Korra is able to get that to that place as well herself. And she became this big blue spirit, gets out and just goes to Vatu's position and we start a huge fight and Korra's just beating Vatu up, you know, just <laughs> one after the other. And then she kind of gets distracted again when trying to look for Rava, which Vatu takes advantage of. And Vatu just grabs Korra and starts, you know, like taking her soul away. While on the other side, you know, like all these spirits are trying to attack Korra. So Bolin, Mako, you know, Tenzin, all of them are helping them out, uh, trying to keep the spirits away from Korra. Uh, Deskna and Eska is also helping and uh, yeah but Korra here is losing little by little now this part I I don't understand like just a sec um Jinora comes in like I don't understand what actually happened here if you have like an explanation you know let me know because we do like you know in the previous episode Jinora did say like I need to you know, I still have something left to do so what was that like she was kind of glowing she just comes down you know in spirit form and <clears throat> Cora here like just a second Cora is able to see Rava after that you know like Jinora comes down Cora is kind of getting a little like you know that purple thing is just getting to her and Jinora I don't know Jinora what does something like kind of like you know like releases her hand or something like there's like a like a flash of light and the whole place lights up Cora now like that that thing is gone you know that thing that was kind of affecting her that's gone I'm, I'm guessing that's that happened because of Jinora and we can see Rava after this now I I really have no clue what Jinora did here if you if you know about it please let me know uh, but she did something at least which helped Korra out immensely. Like not only she was able to get away from uh, Rava's, not not Rava, sorry, Vatu's thing. But at the same time she was able to locate Ra uh, Rava as well. And she just goes in there, grabs Rava and takes her out. And then she starts purifying or whatever the hell that was, you know. Vatu and just purifies the spirit and the spirit just disappears. Now I'm sure Vatu is there somewhere like as they said as Rava said as uh, you know like these spirits cannot be destroyed. Um, Korra did that thing you know since she knew that Rava has not been destroyed she tried to find the light within the darkness 
and just like that um since uh, vatu is gone now me there will always be from here onwards there it, it will be light you know it will be like 10000 years of light but there will still be that darkness in the light somewhere vatu will be just biding away his time trying to find that one opportunity to come out so kind of like the yin and the yang you know like the the white portion with the little black dot and the black portion with the little white dot that's basically it and it's interesting to see like this whole uh, rava and vatu is basically the yin and the yang you know like whenever like like one one thing predominates the whole thing if it's like the 10000 years of light you know there will always be that little black dark spot in the light you know just like the yin and the yang while like you know alternatively whenever like there's like 10000 years of darkness there will always be that little speck of light just like the yin and the yang uh in in the form of rava so yeah that's what happened but that's cora's duty cora's duty is to keep that one little dark spot suppressed and that's her duty as an avatar and i'm sure she she'll be able to do that perfectly from here onwards now cora comes back to the spirit world you know after destroying rava uh, not rava sorry vatu i always mix those two names up and she comes back into her body and uh, yeah jinora is back as well rava comes back and the harmonic convergence is over the whole world is at peace now 10000 years of light and uh, yeah everything's good everyone's cheering and everything now bolin <laughs> bolin does say to eska he's, he's like at first i thought he, he was going to say something like he was saying that oh it's like a long distance relationship that usually doesn't work i thought he was going to say like so let's break up or something but he actually says the opposite he's like so can you shift over to republic city but now i obviously knew that eska would deny this because you know their dad just died and they have like the, their own thing to do like they need to go back to home to their mother and you know like like even though like unalak was a bad person still you know like they they are like you know like like loss of their father and they you know they need to go and console their mother and maybe they need to take some of their dad's responsibility on their shoulders as well like um unalak was like the um you know like the chief or whatever so even though the, he is no more chief still you know i'm sure they have their own duties to follow so they would be pretty busy from here onwards so i'm guessing that's why eska is like no i'm sorry and she's like i got caught up in the moment but you'll always hold a special place in my heart i'll remember you fondly <laughs> my turtle duck <laughs> oh boy that was sad bolin was kind of sad you know in the end because i feel he he really was like thinking like oh yeah maybe this time you know uh but yeah sad okay and uh, after that um, oh here interesting thing comes to light uh, uh what's her name uh, cora <laughs> cora has like you know the 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 past connections are gone now i thought it was going to come back but it's gone so i'm guessing she won't be able to meet ang after this anymore and she has to make her own path like previously ang always consulted avatar roku before and whenever like you know there was like this kind of tricky situations and he needed advice but cora won't be able to do that but tenzin's here with her i'm sure he'll help her out and tenzin is an adult you know a lot more experience he holds all right now cora makes a decision here which i as i said is the correct decision in my opinion she's like let's keep the portal open and i agree with this wholeheartedly because as i said you know like closing the portal means not giving them the freedom so if he she keeps the portal open the spirits and the humans will have like a freedom they'll be like yeah maybe i should go to the other world today like before they didn't have any choice they had to stay in the perspective worlds so now if they want to they can come and if they don't want to they should they couldn't they should like they wouldn't and 
I feel like that's huge and that's going to like you know kind of help out in a lot of ways because I'm sure there's a lot of spirits who actually wants to live in the human world with their favorite human best friend or something like that just like uh, Boomy and B B Junior what was the name? Boomju Boomju yeah <laughs> just like Boomy and Boomju you know like they will have that freedom now you know they won't be just separated from their favorite human or spirit friend so and like you know spirits or humans who wouldn't who doesn't like the other other you know like um person they could just stay in their own place no problem and i said this before again there will obviously be bad people and bad spirits who will maybe come now and then try to mess up the whole thing but that's why Cora is here Cora is going to keep an eye for that and you know like keep the law and order maintained so yeah now another interesting thing happened here i was really surprised i was not expecting that they they come and like you know like marco and cora come and marco kind of says that okay yeah you know what like i actually broke up with you and this happened cora's like yeah i remember that and i thought he was going to say the whole thing about asami he did not say that so but i thought that she was he was going to apologize and they were like you know going to get up back together or something um interesting cora said that oh maybe we're not working out together you know properly and we should probably just break up permanently this time i was surprised marco actually agreed to that marco was like yeah and um uh, i you know i uh yeah you know what i feel like this this was needed like i i feel like the drama was in, intense like you know these few seasons like the whole marco cora asami thing was really very ah i don't know like extreme like they didn't even know themselves what to do like they they themselves are confused teenagers so they need to stop this for a moment and actually think like yeah what 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 should i do like not just like you know not just start dating just because of the heat of the moment no just just stop for a moment there and just think and that's what i think cora decided to do this time and you know what i'm glad about that i think because um yeah marco this whole thing where marco was just you know like just dilly dallying this whole thing not being able to make up his mind was kind of annoying me uh, these couple past two seasons and i really hope that changes from here onwards and uh, yeah cora needs to just chill for a moment <laughs> and I'm, I'm 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 kind of happy about this like you know this this conclusion never thought i would say that you know <laughs> like because all, like you know at least in avatar like the whole uh, katara and ang the you kind know, of chemistry was so well done you know, like everyone was just rooting for the relationship but look at Cora here like I'm, I'm actually glad they broke off like thank god like this whole drama nonsense was kind of going out of hand so yeah yes thanks thank you like that was like a good thing that happened in the end oh boy and uh, <laughs> Bolin kind of came Bolin was like oh should I give you a hug I'm kind of sad for Bolin. Bolin Bolin's such a nice person, but you know, he always tries is able to get that like you know like at least in this episode he was almost able to you know get like you know uh, start dating Des Eska, but unfortunately it did not work out. So it's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, but okay then um then we go back to the water tribe and Cora explains to everyone that yeah the portal will be open i won't be the bridge anymore but i've realized that instead of looking at our past we should forge our own path completely in with our own decisions and even though i won't be the bridge i will still be here with rafa and i will protect the world so yeah and oh and Tonrock also became the leader of the tribe so yeah that's how it ends so yeah good ending and um now my whole impression of this season was it was definitely weaker than season one as i said unalak was the worst part of this this season i feel like and 
there was like this unnecessary drama as well varic was an interesting development i really loved varic and um i liked uh, uh, tenzin's character development as well that was needed um, cora did annoy me in the first few episodes where she was acting as a brat but then she again kind of like you know kind of settled down and changed and i was like yeah it's okay marco as always marco annoyed me uh, not as a character as a character he's a good character but her, his emotional like you know thing where is not able to make up his mind that annoyed me completely um one thing that i really hated about this uh, season is uh, beifong being a complete bystander you know when in season 1 she was such a huge part of the story where we see how cool she is here she's just like this one person just standing there and making wrong taking wrong decisions and those two cops were just like you know just falsely accusing others and everything and beifong was like yeah you're right you're right arrest marco yeah you're right uh he must be the criminal arrest him like this type of a thing like like what happened like in in this one season what what just happened like this this if if i think about it like that there's a lot of flaws in this uh, season a lot of flaws i can i can just keep stating them one by one and but you know i've 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 heard this from a lot of people like a lot of people kind of really go like keep like you know just bash into season 2 they're like oh it's worst is the worst thing but i think that's as over exaggerating i've seen a lot of trash anime and cora season 2 is nothing close to that cora season 2 was bad compared to season 1 definitely but it's not that bad that's what i'm trying to say so it had a lot of shortcomings as i said and i i was kind of disappointed but by the end of it i feel like everything kind of wrapped up pretty pretty nicely and there was like cool fight scenes and everything and but but in the end everyone kind of grows you know like cora grows up uh, you know emotionally tenzin grows emotionally uh, marco kind of realizes that yeah maybe i should just stop trying to date people you know just calm down for a few months you know like this is not working out <laughs> and bolin goes to a nice character development as well you know he he kind of realizes like his brothers like you know like the like importance of family and varic was an interesting addition i loved varic <laughs> oh boy and what else yeah overall it was bad but it was not that bad but it has its good points as well and the the, the those two episodes of the avatar origin was one of the best things it's it's probably the best two episodes of the whole series of season 1 and 2 combined those two episodes are the best so oh and we also saw iro here that's also another plus point i i loved iro's little cameo appearance in one of those episodes not cameo but like in you know, a little guest appearance <laughs> so yeah like these are the things you know so um yeah that's my uh, uh what what can i say verdict um it was not good it was not as good as season 1 but it's also not bad so i've seen a lot of people just completely like go hard and just like you know just say like oh this is like the worst thing ever no it's it's not that much you know like it's it's not that like you know that bad it is bad but still i've seen a lot of worse things than uh, legend of korra book 2 so yeah that was okay uh, i would say that was okay it had its good spot good parts it had its bad parts It was like a mixture. So I have heard that season two is like the uh, weakest out of the all the four seasons. Season three and four, I've heard that it's better than season two. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. You know, from next week onwards, we'll start season three. So yeah. Um. So yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. This was my reaction to uh, the Legend of Korra book two, episode number thirteen and fourteen. And these two were the final episodes of this season. So yeah if you guys enjoyed these videos be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out so yeah that was it thanks for watching I'll see you guys next week uh, with a brand new season that is book 3 of Legend of Korra two more episodes I'll see you guys then until then goodbye and have a nice day